Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, good afternoon, audience. Yesterday we did CGT, capital gain tax, chargeable gain tax, right? Uh, our today's topic is inheritance tax and value added tax, right? Okay, this is the day two of P2P revision webinars, right? Now, first we'll cover inheritance tax and then we'll move on to value added tax, okay? Right? Uh, you all know IHT is not an income tax, it's a wealth tax. It's a wealth tax, right? And IHT is normally computed on transfer of wealth, on transfer of wealth. Now, how are we gonna compute? How are we get, gonna compute amount of amount of IHT payable, amount on which amount do IHT is payable? So normally you might have studied this. Listen. IHT is computed on decrease in wealth of donor. Now listen, 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 listen. There are two people. One is donor and the other guy is donee, right? Donor is giving gift and the donee is receiving gift. But what's the law? The law is IHT is calculated on decrease in wealth of donor, not increase in wealth of donee. But a student can ask, sir, if you are giving this pen, if you are giving this pen to your son, so the... If, this pen is going out of your pocket and it, this this pen is going inside the pocket of the sun so the increase in wealth of doni equals decrease in the wealth of donor yes in this case you are right but not always uh, you might have heard about the example of the pair of shoe if the pair of shoe is combined the value is different but but if i do it separate like right shoe and left shoe is separate so the value is definitely different right so that's why Tax department has made this law that IHT is calculated on decrease in wealth of donor. Now, how do we calculate this decrease in wealth of donor? Now, listen very carefully. Listen, first of all, just think that donor has not given any gift. Donor has not given any gift. Now, calculate the value of that gift. So, what is it? Wealth of donor before gift. First, you will calculate this amount. Wealth of donor before gift. And then after giving up listen listen after giving the gift now what else is left with you after giving the gift what else is left with the donor calculate the value of that of that amount right so less wealth of donor after gift when you take the difference of these two you will you will you will come to decrease in wealth of donor right now normally in past papers i have given the example of pair of shoes but in past paper normally this example come with shares this example come with shares and you all know this that combined shares the 100 percent 80 percent shares have different value and if you break it up if you break it up like in 40 percent 30 percent 10 percent the value is different right okay so you have to apply this formula wealth of donor before gift less wealth of donor after gift now one more thing in today's past papers, we'll also cover this area practically as well okay so don't forget this this is a very basic thing and normally, normally examiner ask about this also, right? Now, moving forward to next slide. Now, very important, very important. IHT is calculated on normally two things. Number one, lifetime gifts, lifetime gifts, and number two, death state. Lifetime gifts and death state. Lifetime gifts means you have given a gift to your son or your daughter or anybody permanently forever so this is called lifetime gifts and lifetime gifts are given when you are alive when you are alive now what is death state death state means a, let us say a person has just died and whatever is left whatever is left with him or her that total amount is death state is death state so IHT is not only applicable on that state, but also on lifetime gifts, also on lifetime gifts, right? Okay, so there are two major, there are two major lifetime gifts. The first, first we are going to cover the lifetime gifts. The first gift, we call it PET, P-E-T, and the full form is, the full form is potentially exempt transfer. The full form is potentially exempt transfer. Now, sir, what is potentially exempt transfer? Gift to any person, gift to any person. One person gives gift to another person that that is bad, that is potentially exempt from IHT point of view. So, what does it mean? It means in the year of gift, in the year of gift, listen, in the year of gift, let us say 
I have given gift to my son in 15, 16 fiscal year. I have given gift to my son in 15, 16 fiscal year. I have given him a car or anything, right? So right now in the year of gift, there is no tax at all. There is no tax, no IHT at all, no IHT implication, even no calculation at all, right? But if the donor died, read it, read it, read it. If donor died within seven years, within seven years, from the date of gift then this pet will be chargeable then this pet will be chargeable in the year of death then this pet will be chargeable in the year of death okay so don't forget what is how how will you recognize pet in the exam one person giving gift to another person one person giving gift to another person is pet and in the year of gift of pet there is no iht no iht implication even no calculation but if donor died within seven years then this pet is chargeable in the year of death. Okay. Now, one very important concept market value of gift, market value of gift locked at the time of gift. For example, for example, I have given, I have given a property to my son in 1516. I have given a property to my son in 1516. And at the time, at the time of giving this gift, the market value of the property is $100,000. The market value of that property is hundred thousand dollars, right? Let us say I died after two years. So within seven years I died. So this pet will be chargeable. But at the time of death, the market value of this property rose to three hundred thousand. At the time of gift, the market value was hundred thousand. But after two years, that means that in the year of death, it rose to it rose to three hundred thousand. So now the question is. Sir, do we have to pay tax on 100,000 or 300,000? Just 100,000. Increase in values, increase in values is must be ignored. And that's one of the benefit of PET. That's one of the benefit of PET. And that's one of the planning point. Listen, for example, I'm a daddy and I have to give, I have three assets, I have three assets. And I have to give only one asset. I have to gift only one asset. So I must choose that asset whose market value is about to increase very high. So in that case, I'll transfer that asset and I'll lock the market value whose market value going to increase in future, right? Okay, right now my dear students Second 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 lifetime gift is second lifetime gift is chargeable lifetime transfer What's the what's the identification of this chargeable lifetime transfer? Sir, uh, what's the shortcut of this CLT? We call it CLT CLT CLT, okay? CLT and how do we recognize CLT? It's just one line gift to trust gift to trust gift to trust whenever you give to a trust That's 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 called that's called CLT chargeable lifetime transfer. Okay now The name itself says the name itself says chargeable chargeable That means whenever you do whenever you do CLT you have to pay first installment You have to pay first first installment in the year of gift now you are alive you are alive Donor is alive and the the first installment of CLT is to be paid in the year of gift and that first installment is called lifetime IHT on CLT lifetime IHT on CLT. Don't worry. I'll teach you how to how to calculate it. I will teach you. Don't worry. Now one more thing the same thing if donor died if donor died within 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 seven years from the date of gift within seven years from the date of gift then additional iht on clt will also be payable in the year of death okay so in short there are maximum two types of taxes on clt the first is lifetime iht the first is lifetime iht lifetime iht is payable in the year of gift in which in the year in which you do gift right and this additional iht this additional iht is only payable this additional IHT is only payable if the donor died within seven years from the date of gift. What if, what if, sir, if donor died after seven years, then there is no additional IHT, then there is no additional IHT, right? Then only one, one tax that is lifetime IHT. Now, same concept, same market value of gift is locked at the date of gift. The same concept, the just we discussed in PAT market value which market value will be considered market value will be considered the one at the date of gift okay increase in market value will be ignored again increase in market value will be ignored again right okay 
now open your eyes open your eyes be very active be very active you are in revision days you are not on normal classes please now for lifetime ict lifetime ict on clt lifetime ict on clt means the first the first installment the first installment which we pay in the year of in the year of gift there are two options there are two options either trustees can pay trustees can pay trustees can also pay this first this first installment if trustee pays this first installment then the tax rate to be used is 20% open your eyes then the tax rate is is to be used is 20% and no need of grossing up no need of crossing up okay if lifetime ist is paid by trustees then you have to use 20% rate for the calculation of lifetime ist and no crossing up is required but 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 there is one more option there is one more option my dear donor 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 can also pay donor can also pay this first installment what we call it lifetime ist in that case in that case the tax rate for the lifetime ist is 25% look at here the tax rate to be used for lifetime ist is 25% and you have to do one more thing be very careful then that is crossing up that is crossing up sir what is crossing up what is crossing up what we what you do first you write the clt the amount of gift after annual exemption first you write first you write the clt after annual exemption first you write the clt after an annual exemption and then you add and then you add the lifetime ist which you just calculated then you add the life time i h t which you just calculated and you add both of them and this this call this we call it gross chargeable transfer sir can you tell me the logic of this crossing up sir can you tell me the logic of this crossing up look at me very carefully my camera is on look at me you know the rule i h t is always calculated on decrease in wealth of donor i h t is always calculated on decrease in wealth of donor now listen this time the donor is paying tax donor is paying tax see look at me so let us say the the donor is gifting this pen the donor is gifting this pen so this pen is going out of the pocket and then again the donor puts the hand in the pocket and he took out the cash the tax and he also paid the tax so now listen the total decrease in wealth is this pen the total decrease in wealth is this pen plus plus the lifetime ist so when we add both of them then we we'll, we will come to the actual decrease in wealth of donor so the logic of crossing up is one line what iht is computed on decrease in wealth of donor giving you 20 30 seconds just look at this sketch look at this sketch come on boys now one more good news one more good news listen there is one concept which is which we call it taper relief taper relief listen first of all there is no taper relief on death state one line no taper relief on death state i have not written here but i can orally and orally telling you this there is no taper relief on death state taper relief is only calculated on for, only for pad and additional iht on clt Taper relief is only calculated on on PAT and additional IST on CLT. Now, listen. What were what were the rules? Let us say donor gift an asset now, and he died after seven years. He died after seven years. Then no zero percent tax, no tax. Donor did PAT now, and he died after seven years. After seven years of PAT, then zero percent tax. But you know, tax department has tax department has given one more fa favor. If you die before seven years, or if you die, I, I should say, if you die close to seven years, then you will get an, a new relief, which is called taper relief. Look at the screen. L look at the screen. If you die after seven years, then 0% tax, then 100% exemption or 0% tax. 100% tax is exempt, or you can say 0%. But if you die after six years, if you die after six years and before seven years, if you die after six and before seven, you will get 80% waiver. You will get 80% exemption of tax that is taper relief. And if you die five after five and before six, after five and before six, then 
after four and before five, 40 percent. After three and before four, it's 20 percent. And if you die before three years, then you died very early. Then you are not eligible for any taper relief. Then you are not eligible for any taper relief. Okay. Now, I'm I'm using some historical words, very famous lines. Uh, if you want to write, you may write. For taper relief, look at me. For taper relief, always count the gap between date of gift and date of death. Date of gift and date of death. Date of gift and date of death. Whenever you need to calculate taper relief, you need to calculate, you need to count the gap between date of gift and date of death. Okay. Now, one more good news, one more exemption. This is called annual exemption. I hope you studied annual exemption of CGT yesterday. That was 12,000 uh, pounds. For IHD, annual exemption is 3,000 pounds per annum. Per annum means per fiscal year, right? First of all, first of all, keep in your mind that annual exemption is not available for death state calculation. Annual exemption is not available for death state calculation. Forget it, please. Annual exemption is only available for lifetime gift, lifetime gifts like PET and CLT. Lifetime gifts like PET and CLT. Okay. Now the first rule, it's three thousand per annum, right? The first rule. For example, there is a fiscal year. For example, there is a fiscal year, and there are two gifts. There are two gifts in that fiscal year. One is PET and other is CLT. First, you did PET, and the other one is CLT. Now, sir. How are we gonna use this annual exemption for this fiscal year? The strict rules, the rules are very strict. Sorry, it's, it's tax, it's tax you have to follow. The rule is always use left to right, always use left to right, left to right. So left to right, the PAT is coming first. So, so first of all, we'll use annual exemption for PAT, okay? Don't forget. Then one more good news. For example, I'm, uh, we are in 15, 16 fiscal year. In 15 16 fiscal year, we didn't give any gift. We didn't give any gift. So our annual exemption is unused. Our annual exemption is unused. So the good news is unused annual exemption can be can carried forward for only one year. That means 15 16 annual exemption can be used for 16 17, right? Only one year and then it will be expired. Now, the next thing, for example, there is a fiscal year in which we are in 1617 now in 1617 we have one annual exemption of 1617 3000 and one annual exemption of previous year one annual exemption of 1617 and one of one brought forward of last year now which annual exemption to be used first look at here always use always use current year annual exemption first and then last year always use current year annual exemption first and then last year don't forget this, these are very small, little, little things, and these, uh, these carry almost two marks because this topics no, topic normally comes in OT cases, and in OT cases, if you do a slight mistake, the whole MCQ is wrong. Now there are some more exemptions. There are some more exemptions. Uh, this is what we call uh marriage exemption obviously uk government also studies this that uh, not all wealth transfer is is uh, is taxable for iht because there are some events like marriage all all parents normally give with their own wish with their own wish to their son daughters right that's the time of happiness right so that law is relaxed here marriage exemption what is marriage exemption first five thousand pounds by parents excess is paid at the time of marriage at the time of marriage if parent mom or dad mom or dad if they give if they give separately five five thousand gifts this this five thousand is exempt this five thousand first five thousand is exempt the excess is paid the excess is paid what does it mean wait for example mom gifted seven thousand pounds mom gifted seven thousand pounds to daughter that means out of this 7,000 pound, first 5,000, first 5,000 will be exempt through marriage exemption and the excess 2,000 will be treated as bad. As bad. Now, for grandparents, for, for grandparents, first 2,500 by grand, grandparents is exempt. Just like parents, 5,000 for grandparents is 2,500. 
and what about the other 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 guests other guests are first 1000 pounds first 1000 pounds okay one more thing don't forget that for marriage exemption in three lines i've used the word first 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 that means access will be paid that means access will be paid don't don't forget and listen if you read the examiner report of last september 2020 last this these things come these things come this marriage exemption came in the exam okay now one more topic small gift exemption small gift exemption if in any fiscal year this small gift exemption is not related to marriage exemption okay this is a separate topic in any fiscal year if you look at me in any fiscal year if you give if you do gift to anybody less than 250 in one fiscal year you give gift to your daughter of 200 pound it's totally exempt 220 pounds it's totally exempt but if the total gifts if the total gifts in one fiscal year to any party if the total gifts to in one fiscal year to any party exceeds 250 then whole amount is paid not just the excess or what is the example for example you gave you gifted you gifted 320 pounds to your daughter in this fiscal year you gifted 320 320 pounds to your daughter so 320 pounds 320 pounds is greater than 250 now the complete 320 will be treated as pet don't forget okay so in marriage exemption i use the word excess but in but in small gift exemption i use the word complete amount complete amount will be taxable right now there is one more thing look at here look at here this is what we call small this is what we call a small gift exemption listen listen in the very first slide i use the word iht is not income tax iht is a wealth tax so iht is not meant to stop your daily life just think on routine daily parents pay the fees of school school fees parent gives pocket money to kids routine for, for routine daily life so if iht is iht is applicable on each and every transaction then then people will leave literally people will leave uk nobody will stay in uk okay so the law is relaxed here if you if you if you are giving gift out of income they are habitual in nature and does not affect the donor's standard of living does not like every month you are paying 200 500 pounds pound pounds uh, pocket money to your daughter to your son you are paying the school fees and it's habitual routine and it's from from your income routine income then 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 there is no iht even this thing is not bad even this thing is not bad okay okay now so you must have knowledge of these things now we are we are starting a practical area be very careful be very active okay at the time of death death listen at the time of all death taxes have one single rate 40 percent in iht all death taxes have only one single rate that is 40 percent okay what are the taxes names the question is sir name the taxes which are computed at the time of death name the tax taxes which are computed at the time of death you can count one is pet pet la within last seven if pet is done within last seven years of death then 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 this pet then this pet is then this pet is chargeable at the time of death number two if any clt is done within last seven years of death then you have to calculate you have to calculate additional iht on clt at the time of death and the third thing third and the last thing and the most important yes iht on death state iht on death state iht on death state right so these are these three are the death taxes pat additional iht on clt and iht on death state right okay now now i'm so i'm going i'm going to solve a practical question in front of you because uh, there are a lot of practical things in i now let us say there is a guy uh, who did only these two gifts only these two gifts no other gifts in the whole life and he died he died on february 2020 see this is the date of death february i've just written the month of death okay now first of all first july 2015 he was alive he was taking breath he was alive 
first august 18 alive he died on february 2020 so the first gift he did is clt on first july 20 2015 and this clt was 406 triple zero 406 triple zero okay now hope you remember the annual exemption just think i just said he did the he just gifted these two gifts no other gifts in his whole life so first july 15 first of first july 15 lies in 15 16 fiscal year and before 15 16 there is a fiscal year 14 15 open your eyes and you can see there is no other gift in 14 15 so obviously you have unused unused annual exemption of last year so last year annual exemption can be used this year so 3000 of last year and 3000 of this year this makes this makes 6000 see this makes 6000 okay so 406000 less 6000 will make don't uh, please uh, forgive my bad writing because my writing is good but right now i'm writing uh, writing with the broken hand that's why it's not that much good okay now for pat first august 18 for first august 18 is 206000 pat wait 1st august 18 lies in 1819 fiscal year 1st of august 18 lies in 1819 fiscal year now just think 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 boys and girls please please look at me uh, uh 18 before 1819 the last fiscal year is 1718 and you can see there is no gift in 1718 so 1718 annual exemption and unused so definitely you will have you will have 6000 annual exemption and when you deduct 6000 from 206000 you will have 200 you will have 200000 right okay so finally finally we just calculated annual we just deducted annual exemption so there are two there are only two gifts and i've just calculated subtracted annual exemption I'm just uh, uh, keep quiet because I was on 30 seconds. Okay, 30 seconds. You can see, you can see. Because of Azan, I'm quite all right. Okay, just 30 seconds. now come on come on come on time is very important now let's start calculating the tax first of all in his life first july 15 comes first and in july 15 there is a clt there is a clt so we all know for clt we have to pay the first 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 installment which we call lifetime lifetime ist now as this question is prepared by me so i'm already telling you listen we are we are assuming that the first that the 
first installment is paid by trustees first installment is paid by trustees okay now look at it look at here first installment is paid by trustees so we have to use the tax rate of 20 percent we have to use a tax rate of 20 percent okay let's start and don't forget the person is alive the per person is not dead now look at here look at here look at here the heading is lifetime ist on clt lifetime ist on clt now what is the chargeable amount of clt this is four lakh after annual exemption okay now if you remember if you guys remember this the person is alive right now and this gift is gift this gift is given in 1516 15 16 fiscal year so what we do we have to use the nrb nil rate band nil rate band of 15 16 in the question i just moved the slides in the question it is it's one minute hello man have you questions silent here maybe whatsapp group ka hai look at here look at here so lifetime ist on clt means the person is alive right now and we are going to calculate the first installment so we have to use nrb nrb of that fiscal year and it is ready made given in the question i just moved the slide it was 325000 you will always be given right now the second news be open your eyes please important discussion second news is that that nrb is always always cumulative for 7 years its total com combined it is combined for 7 years right so for nrb you always have to see you always look at look at the screen you are, you, you will always for nrb you will come to the date of gift you will st stay at the date of gift and and you will see last 7 years look at my screen you will stay you will stay on the date of gift and you will see back you will see back last 7 years and you will see did you calculate any any ihd did you calculate any ihd on any gift if yes then you have to reduce then you have to reduce your nrb you have to reduce your nrb from that amount of gift if you have calculated tax on any gift in last seven years definitely that should be clt then right but in this question see in last seven years there is no gift in last seven years there is no gift so your nrb is totally unused your 325 000 nrb is totally unused so you are relaxed so you can use complete nrb here look at here look at here reduction 325 000 less reduction is zero less reduction is zero because no gift in last seven years so complete 325 000 will be used so 400 000 less 325 000 first 325 000 there is no tax excess is 75000 now tell me now tell me what is the tax rate what is the tax rate what is the tax rate the tax rate is 20% why the tax rate is 20% because i just told you in this case the lifetime ist is paid by trustees the lifetime ist is paid by trustees so you will have 15000 this is the first the first answer uh, you have calculated the lifetime ist on clt so you have just calculated the lifetime ist on CLT okay now done now 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 wait, wait 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 again come to the question this lifetime HT is done this is done okay now the person is still alive don't forget the person is still alive he is breathing in out now after some time he did pat now boys and girls just think if a person is alive and he's he just did pat there is no tax there is no tax or on pat in the year of gift there is no tax on pat in the year of gift so you just you just give give them a smile no no tax completion leave it now finally finally the end end day this is death 
death day this is death day the person died on february 20 right okay now wait now we have to start death taxes now what's the first and the most important step of death taxes is from the date of death you have to you have to go seven years back from the date of death you have to go seven years back back and you have to mark mark that date so from from february 2020 from february 2020 if you go seven years back so you will come to february 2013 right you go seven years back and you you will come to february 2013 now look at my look at my look at my face my camera my fingers and from last seven years now you have to walk you know how to walk you have to walk left to right see left to right left to right left to right which gift is coming first clt which gift left to right is must left to right is mandatory don't forget you go seven years back from the date of death and then you start walking that then you start walking left to right so if you walk left to right the first thing will come that is clt the first thing will come that is clt and if i'm not wrong and if you are seeing this question you can easily see that the yes the person died before within seven years of this clt the person died within seven years of the clt so now you have to calculate now you have to calculate now you have to calculate additional ist on c this clt additional ist on this clt okay now how do we calculate it in the death you you know for death taxes you get you get again nrb you get again nrb of 325000 and for 1920 fiscal year the nrb is again 325000 for 1920 fiscal year there is a fixed nrb you have to learn that is 3 lakh 325000 right and now we have to do working from zero okay so these are the death taxes see these are the death taxes and i have used the black pen I have used the black pen. Okay, for death taxes, I am using black color pen. Now, what's the heading? Additional IST on CLT. Additional IST on CLT. What's the amount of CLT? What's the amount of CLT? The amount of CLT is the amount of CLT is four lakh. Now, again, you have NRB of three lakh twenty five thousand. You have NRB of three lakh twenty five thousand at the time of death. Now, I just told you, NRB is always for seven years. N R B is always for seven years and you have to look back seven years now very important the biggest mistake students did listen for seven years for seven years you don't have to stay at the date of death you have to stand at the date of gift you have to stand at the date of gift and you look back seven years so just think from the date of gift from the date of gift what's the date of gift the date of gift is first july 15 see the date of gift is first july 15 if you see if you see last last seven years there is no gift if you see last seven years back from first july 15 there is no gift so that means your total nrb is unused again your total nrb is unused and you can easily you can easily use it you can easily use it now let's do it so there is no reduction you will be using you will be using complete nrb you will be using complete nrb of 325000 so 4 lakh less 325000 will give you 75000 now now boys and girls tell me these are death taxes for death taxes there is only one tax rate for death taxes there is only one tax rate and that is 40% for death taxes there is only one tax rate and that is 40% tell me 75000 times 40% is how much 75,000 times 40% is how much? This is, I think, 30,000. Okay. 30,000. Okay. Now, one more thing. One more thing. I hope you remember the taper leaf. I just taught you the taper leaf. For taper leaf, for taper leaf, listen my dialogue. For taper leaf, always count the gap between date of gift and date of death. For taper leaf, always count the gap between date of gift and date of death. Now, look at me. I don't want to move the screen. Now, listen, date of gift was 1st July 15 and date of death was February 2020. Let's count from 1st July, July 15 to July 16, one year, July 17, July 18, July 19, and no more July 20, no more July 20. Repeat from 1st July 15, July 15 to 16, one year, 17, 
18 and 19 there is no more july 20 because the person died in the person died in february 20 so it's more than four years and less than five years is more than four years and less than five years so taper relief will be 40 percent between four to five taper relief is 40 percent okay let's deduct taper relief tr at the rate 40 percent 30,000 less 40%. What's the 40% of 30,000? It's, I think, 12,000. So let's write 12,000 here. And 30 minus 12, 30 minus 12 will give you 18. 30 minus 12 will give you 18. Now, 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 now. Wait, wait, wait. 30 minus 12. We are very close to success, please. 30 minus 12 is 18. 30 minus 12 is 18. Now, this is the total IHT. This is the total IHT on CLT, but don't forget what we have to calculate. We have to calculate additional IHT. We have to calculate additional IHT. So just think we have already paid. We have already paid some IHT on CLT. We have already paid some IHT on CLT. And now we have to calculate the additional. So just simply deduct it. Simply deduct the IHT already paid. Simply deduct IHT already paid already paid this is i think 15000 so the number is the final final amount is 3000 okay so this is your this is your additional iht on clt the first death tax is, is here the the first death tax is ready the first death tax is ready the question is not done yet the question is not done yet now i told you about the left to right walk left to right walk left to right walk see from the date of death you went seven years back and then left to right left to right first this clt first this clt you just you just did it you just did it you just did everything for the clt now more walk left to right left to right left to right now again pat now this pat of two lakh this pat of two lakh and now just think the donor died the donor died within seven years within seven years of this this pad the donor died within seven years of this pad so yes this pad is also chargeable at the time of death this pad is also chargeable at the time of death okay so let's calculate the iht on pat iht on pat see this what's the amount of this pad two lakh the amount of this pad is two lakh now again you are doing death taxes for death taxes you have three lakh twenty five thousand nrb for death taxes you have three lakh twenty five thousand nrb but don't forget the seven year accumulation principle now you will see the real application now for nrb reduction we never stay at the date of death we stay we stay at the date of gift we stay at the date of gift and what's what what was the date of this gift I think 1st August 18. 1st August 18. The date of this gift what 1st August 18. You will stay at 1st August 18 and you will see seven years back. See, you, you stay at the date of gift and you see seven years back. Yes, seven years back, back there is a big giant CLT. There is a big giant CLT for which you just did calculation. There is a big giant CLT for which you just did calculation. Yes, so that CLT definitely consume the NRB. So what is the what is the law? I'm using the wordings of law. In last seven years, you have to you have to see did you calculate tax on an, any gift? Yes, we did. So just just deduct the just deduct the value of that gift. Just deduct the value of that gift that was four lakh. Just deduct the value of that that gift after annual exemption it was four lakh. So obviously, if you deduct three twenty five thousand, if you deduct four lakh from three twenty five thousand, nothing will be left. Nothing will. So it's zero. It's nothing. So complete two hundred thousand is your chargeable amount. Okay. And my dear students, what's the rate of death tax? What's the rate of death tax? It's simply forty percent. So 200,000 less 40% gives you 80,000, gives you 80,000, 80,000, 200,000 times 40% gives you 80,000. Now, sir, 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 you forgot one thing. Oh, what, 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 what? You forgot, you forgot taper leaf. My dear student, okay, let's try taper leaf, but don't forget the wordings. For taper leaf, always count the gap between date of gift and date of death. 
for paper relief always count the gap between date of gift and date of death so date of gift was first august 18 august 18 to august 19 not even august 20 so he died before three years before three years so there is no taper relief so this is your full and final tax this is your iht on pat is full and final tax okay okay let me show you the slides just for 30 seconds the two slides wait 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 these are the two slides or i, I should say the complete solution Okay. Now, one cash box. I must say this is ready marks. Computation of death state. Computation of death state. It came many times. I've I've seen this many times. What is death state? Let us say a person just died. Whatever, whatever wealth he has at the time of death this is this is what that state is okay so what we do you just add all assets you just add all assets even 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 all assets include individual savings account guilds what there are there are there are some assets which are exempt for cgd but they are not exempt for ihd all assets all assets just add all assets okay less liabilities less liabilities for which consideration was taken by deceased now only only those liabilities are allowed only those liabilities are allowed for which for which the the diseased got benefit in his life for example disease uh, just before the death uh, one week before the death or two weeks before the death uh, the the disease went for went for shopping and he used he used the credit card so definitely when you when you use credit card you buy something right so he get the he got the consideration so these these debts are allowed these debts are allowed but don't forget that gambling debts or verbal promises that uh, uh, for example disease promise to a poor guy that i will give i will help you in your school fees or something so such verbal promises are not allowed such verbal promises are not allowed okay less mortgages less mortgages yes mortgages allowed normal mortgages are allowed because normally in uk usa 99 90 percent houses are on mortgage right that's the culture so normal mortgage is allowed but one mortgage is not allowed one mortgage is not allowed and that is endowment mortgages that is endowment mortgages listen what is endowment mortgage endowment mortgage means you have taken a loan but you are not responsible to pay that loan the insurance company will pay that loan the insurance company will pay that loan so you are not responsible that's why that endowment mortgage will not be deducted from your debt state calculation okay one more thing one more thing which i have not written here but you all know and let me tell you i have written all assets all assets means their market values all assets means their market value but there is one asset which is called life life insurance proceeds life insurance proceed there is one asset which we call it life insurance proceed so never never include the market value of life insurance or life assurance policy just add the actual receipts just add the actual receipts of life insurance or life assurance policies okay and finally you can less the funeral expenses finally you can less the funeral expenses okay so here you will have the chargeable state this this will be your chargeable state this will be your chargeable death state okay right so sometimes listen sometimes this death state working is given ready made death state number is given ready made and sometimes you have to calculate it but whenever it comes it's it's easy marks it's easy marks
Now this is a spouse exemption, very famous between husband, wife, and civil partners. Husband, for example, husband gives wife one million pounds, one million dollars in life, or even after death through will. No tax, no tax. Just you have to line spouse exemption, and that's it. So no more, no more, no more chargeable events between husband, wife, husband, wife, and civil partners in in life, and also after death. Okay, any gifts, any gift, just write one word spouse exemption, just write one word spouse exemption. Now, this is a technical topic. This is a new topic. This is a new topic. Please, please, I will try my best, but you also have to give energy. This is what this is a new topic, which is called residence NRB. This is called residence NRB. First of all, see, this is an extra nrb other than normal nrb i hope you remember the 325000 nrb i hope you remember the 325000 nrb so this is extra nrb this is a new nrb other than that nrb that is separate and one more thing that normal nrb we apply 7 years 7 years 7 year accumulation principle for that normal nrb we apply 7 year accumulation principle now one first thing i have written almost all points here only available for the computation of debt state iht computation listen this residence nrb is not available this residence nrb is not available for pat and clt forget it this residence nrb is not available for pat and clt calculation this is only available for the calculation of debt state debt state keep it in your mind very important points these are Easy marks. Number two, what is the amount of residence and RB is one lakh fifty thousand per one for one one person one lakh fifty thousand. The amount of residence and RB is one lakh fifty thousand. Okay, right. Now, what are the conditions? What are the conditions which we, which which must be met in order to in order to qualify for residence and RB? These are the conditions. See, number one individual died on or after 6th april 2017 first thing if you want to include residence and rb in the calculation read the date of death read the date of death the person must be died on on or after 6th april 2017 this is the first condition number two main residence main residence inherited by direct descendant listen in your will you have written that listen look at me and look at this sketch this highlighted thing that you have to give you have to give your property downward in your generation for example father is giving to son father is giving to daughter for example father or uh, grandfather giving to grandson like this it should not go like this for example, if, if in the will it is written, if in the will it is written that we ha you have given the main residence, you have given the main residence to your brother, you are disqualified. You are totally disqualified from this relief. Okay. So this thing is must see, see this, 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 this. You see this highlighted thing, grandfather to father to son, like this. It should go like this. Oh. Value of total debt state must be greater than 3 like 25,000. This is one more condition and if you are if you are if you are if you want to use this residence and rb your total debt state must be greater than three like twenty five thousand one more thing your debt state your debt state that we just studied must include main residence your main resident must be part of the debt state and finally and one extra point even this extra point is not written in the article but this is a mistake people do there is no seven year accumulation principle for this nrb seven year accumulation principle is only applicable is only 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 applicable for normal nrb not for this nrb my dear students okay now we are going to start we are going to start the first question but uh, before we move to this first question I want to take a five minutes break. I want to take a just just a five minute break. Okay, right. So what you should do the screen sharing is on. You can just read this question. You can just read this question if you or if you want to take the break five minutes, you can uh, see you after five minutes. See you after five.
Okay. Welcome back. Now we are starting this question. Not that much difficult. Just focus. Focus is very important. Don't use your cell phone. Just focus on the screen, please. Let's start. Tom died. Very important date. First May 2019. Don't forget this date. This is the date of death. First May 2019. Okay. Now this now they are telling you the story history. He had made a gift with a chargeable amount of four lakh fifty thousand for after all available exemptions. Thank God that means annual exemption has already been deducted. Okay. To a trust, to a trust, to a trust. That means it's CLT. It's CLT. Okay. Now we all know for CLT. Look at me, but dear. Uh, for we all know for CLT, you have to pay lifetime IST the first the first installment right and for first installment two options either either donor can pay or that trustee can pay so tom paid tom 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 paid the inheritance tax arising on the gift that means donor is paying donor is paying so you tell me what should be the rate what should be the rate of lifetime IST? definitely 25 percent. i already told you i already told you three four times okay so for this gift for this gift, 25% should be used. 25% should be used. Now wait. I'm not going to read the complete question. I'm going to solve the first, the first part. The first part. Now you can see in the screen there is he just give he had made a gift only, made a gift, only one gift. And also this was this was Tom's only gift. Only gift. That means in his own in his whole life. This person did only gift only one thing. This this is the only gift. That means last seven years from February 13. If you see last seven years, it's so totally free. Last seven years are also totally free, right? And one more thing. February 13. February 13 lies in 12 13 fiscal year. See, February 13 lies in 12 13 fiscal year. So I just told you, even I solved a question with you guys, practical question with you guys, that for lifetime ist on clt lifetime ist on clt you have to use nrb of the same fiscal year of this not the fiscal year of death the same fiscal year in which you have given the gift in which you have given the gift and this is 12 13 this this is 12 13 this is 12 13 okay okay let's start let's start the first the first part c c c c c what was see the screen what was the gross chargeable amount what was the gross chargeable amount in my slides i just taught you in my slides i taught you this the gross chargeable amount okay gross chargeable amount means let's look at here the amount of gift the amount of gift the amount of gift plus that lifetime ist on clt the amount of gift plus that lifetime ist on clt some of these two okay so the amount of gift is already in front of you that is four fifty thousand the amount of gift is already in front of you that is 450,000 but yes 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 you have to you have to calculate lifetime ist on clt let's do it let's do it come on look at here clt is 450,000 and what was the nrb which we just read 325,000 325,000 nrb is available for 12 13 and now seven year accumulation principle nrb is available for last seven years okay so you stay at first february 13 and you look back seven years you look back seven years you look back seven years so there is there is no gift in last seven years so this nrb is free if this nrb is unused so what you do you will come you will use complete three you will use wait you will use complete 325,000 here. So 450 minus 325,000 is, I think, 125,000. Okay, I think it's 125,000. And now, what's the tax rate on this excess amount? As donor is paying the first first installment, so 25%. So 125,000. Wait, let me calculate. 125,000 times 25%. 125,000 times 25% is 31250 is three 
31250 okay now what you have to do this is lifetime IHT on CLT just simply just simply add it in for 50,000 you will get gross you will get gross so how you will get gross 450 look at me 450 plus this 31250 so it become 481250 this is the answer 481250 is the answer 481250 is the answer 481250 is the answer right okay so that's the answer of your first question the one the answer of one is c answer of one is c now the second question is little bit little bit dodgy or i must say there is a weakness in students they can't recognize fiscal year many students and even in my in my classes i always i always focus i give them dates i tell them okay first january 2009 tell me the fiscal year in which it lies but then i say december 2018 tell me the fiscal year february 2018 tell me the fiscal year this is very important and you also should practice this that by looking at any date you you can easily identify the fiscal year okay that's very important now question number two is also connected to this part if tom had tom had made made cash gifts of 5500 to his daughter yes tom one person giving gift to another person is packed one person giving gift to another person is packed okay and there is no marriage here there is no marriage here so no marriage exemption this is full time packed this gift to daughter is full time packed and 400 400 to his granddaughter 400 to his granddaughter this is also packed so student may ask sir 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 uh, you just taught us small gift exemption no dear this 400 is greater than 250 this 400 is greater than 250 and in and in a small gift exemption when you cross 250 the complete amount is packed not just excess complete amount is packed not just excess so this 5500 and 400 both are packed this 5500 and 400 both are packed if you add these two your total pet your total pet on date 20th december 11 20th december 11 is 5900 now you all of you all of you i will tell you don't worry just recognize that 20th december 11 20th december 2011 lies in which fiscal year 20th december 2011 lies in which fiscal year so your answer will be sir 11 12 it lies in 11 11 12 fiscal year okay what would be what would be what would have been the amount of annual exemption available on the gift into trust on 20th february 13 now you tell me 20th february 13 lies in 12 13 20th february 13 lies in 12 13 fiscal year okay okay so now let me explain you look at here let me enlarge you listen in his life in his life please he just did these gifts no other gifts so in 11 12 he did pat of 5900 tell me the last fiscal year before 11 12 it's 10 11 last fiscal year before 11 12 is 10 11 and you can see there is no gift in 10 11 there is no gift in 10 11 so in 11 12 you have you have two annual exemptions you have two annual exemptions 3000 for 11 12 in 11 12 you have two annual exemptions available 3000 for 11 12 and 3000 of previous year but wait how to use annual exemption i told you you remember always use current year first so you will use 11 12 first 11 12 annual exemption first okay and then last year annual exemption so how much annual exemption you need from last year only 2900 how much annual exemption you need from last year that is only 2900 now the student will ask one question sir 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 what about this 100 100 annual exemption is still left that will be expired that will be expired that will be wasted why because 10 11 annual exemption can only be used till 11 12 10 11 annual exemption can only be used till 11 12 
okay so that 100 is wasted now now the listen the question you are here in 12 13 you are giving a clt in 12 13 you are going to give a clt for and 12 13 and 12 13 just think in 12 13 if you see the last year you have already used the last year annual exemption you have already see you have already used the 11 12 ex annual exemption in pat so in 12 13 you have only 3000 annual exemption is left for 12 13 own that's it my dear student for 12 13 clt you have only 3000 annual exemption of that fiscal year don't think that you have the brought forward annual exemption because that is that has already been used that has already been used in pat okay so your answer is 3000 examiner what examiner asked that how much annual exemption is available for clt which we did on 20th feb 13 that is only 3000 that is only 3000 okay because the last year's annual exemption already been used now question number three question number three in respect in respect of the gift again the question number three relates again the question number three relates to the same starting point which we read same starting paragraph in respect of the gift to the trust on 20th feb 13 what rate of taper relief taper relief applied to ist payable on tom's debt and who is liable to pay this additional IHT arising on debt. Select the appropriate box. Okay, 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 okay. Wait, wait. First, let me discuss you the taper relief. See, my sketches are ready. I told you this for taper relief. I told you this for taper relief. Always, always count the gap between date of gift and date of death. For taper relief, always count the gap between date of gift and date of death. Go easy, go easy, go relax. The date of gift is 20th Feb 13 and date of death is 1st May 19. Date of gift is 20th Feb 13 and date of death is 1st May 2019. Okay. Right. Listen, let me count with you. From Feb 13 to Feb 14, Feb 15, Feb 16, Feb 17, Feb 18, Feb 19, Feb 19, but there is no Feb 20. He died before Feb 20. He died before Feb 20. That means more than six and less than seven years. That means more than six and less than seven years. So definitely taper relief is 80%. Taper relief is 80%. Okay. And I hope you remember these rules of payments. What who is responsible? Who is who is responsible to pay additional IHT on CLT? That is that are trustees. Trustees normally pays. Trustee pays. Trustee pays. So your answer is wait taper relief rate is 80 percent and trustees this this is the this is the right matrix c c 80 percent and trustees column the row is 80 percent and the column is trustees okay so who is responsible who is responsible for addition to for paying additional ist on clt the trustees the trustees okay so for question number three your answer is your answer is c Okay, uh, all of you, uh, just write here, write uh, write down the feedback. Are you getting these three questions? We just did these three questions. Are you getting right? Write down in the question in the chat box. In the chat box, all of you, all of you, come on, come on, come on. Stay connected. Stay connected. Are you get? Did you understand the last three questions? Now we are moving to the question part again. Tom's state, 
Tom the state means death state. Tom state means death state. Now we are going to calculate death state. Just I taught you. Tom state at the date of death included the following assets as well as some cash in the bank. Okay. A 50% share valued at 150,000 in success race force. Now listen. 50% uh, share. This is the value of exact 50%. Okay, so this value will directly go will directly go in the death state calculation 150,000 and as I told you at the time of death Whatever you own whatever you own is your is part of your death state all assets are included in your, in your death states Okay, so this 150,000 will be included as it is as it is then cash winnings from betting on ho horse racing 40,000 yes this this Definitely. This is your this is your asset. This is your asset. You will include now number three number three It sh it should click in your mind his main residence valued at 875,000 which has an outstanding Repayment mortgage that means normal mortgage normal repayment mortgage means normal mortgage, please It's not endowment mortgage. It's normal mortgage and yes normal mortgage is always allowed So how do we calculate this final final part? 875,000 less 500,000 875,000 less 500,000 this is going to be 375,000 right so these three numbers will will be added in the death state these three numbers will be added in death state which number 150,000 40,000 and 875 minus 500,000 that is 375,000 now just for your knowledge by looking at the main residence something clicked in my mind the residence nrb Residence NRB maybe examiner examiner may ask residence NRB because his death state includes his death state includes his death state includes the residence NRB. Okay, now let's do the MCQ number four, the second last MCQ. Easy one. What is the net value? What is the net value of the state uh, state assets one to three point number one to three that will be included in Tom's chargeable death state? I hope you remember the number. 50% share in race horse horse that is 1 lakh 50,000 Okay cash winnings 40,000 and now tell me the main residence there was some there was some mortgage as well So 875 875 minus 8 this number 375 875 less 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 500,000 makes 375,000. 375,000. Okay. Okay. Done. Now, the last part, the last and the most important part. I think they might ask residents and RB from us. Let me read the last final lines. Okay. The executors have determined that Tom's chargeable state for IHT purposes was 2 million. See the ready-made death state has given. So the student may ask, sir, what was the above points? These were the part of death state. Now they are giving you the complete total death state. The executors have determined that Tom's chargeable state for IHT purposes was 2 million. Okay, now you have to calculate death taxes. They file their account of the state with HM revenue and customs on 3rd January 2020 no issue now Tom left Please, please open your eyes Tom left all of his estate to his children children downward downward going downward in the generation going downward in the generation Now tell me all residents and RB condition looks looks like we, we have met all conditions looks like we have met all conditions Please open your eyes uh, this guy died on 1st May 2019 that is after 6th April 17 first condition number two the The death state includes the main residency the death state includes the main residence second condition number three He is giving main residence main residence to in the generation downward 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 Yes, and his total chargeable state is greater than three lakh twenty five thousand his short his total chargeable debt state is greater than three lakh twenty five thousand so that means all conditions have been met for residence nrb all conditions have been met for residence nrb okay so my dear i'm going to i'm going to calculate i'm going to use i'm going to use residence nrb in debt state calculation that is one fifty thousand now 
as a as an active student you may ask one question sir sir when we studied iht you all have studied iht in your life obviously you are tx f6 students sir we we studied one topic the transfer of nrb from spouse the transfer of nrb from spouse hope you remember this sir do we apply this topic here no 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 why because tom wife his wife is still his wife is still alive that topic is only applicable if if his wife has already passed away then we and 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 there and if there are some unused nrb in past if there are some unused nrb in past then he can use he can use but this topic is not applicable here because it's clear cut clearly it's clearly written that his wife is still alive his wife is still alive so only his own nrb we can use only his own nrb we can use okay so now make make your mind i am going to calculate i am going to calculate iht on death state only iht on death state not on clt only on death state okay let's do it okay look at here for death state calculation this is the date of death this is the date of death that is first may 2019 i taught you my own question first and in that question i taught you that you have to go 7 years back for death state calculation you have to mark one thing one spot 7 years back so first may 2019 if you go 7 years back there will be first may 12 first may 12 okay last 7 years can you see the last 7 years from the death now you can see there is a clt in between you can see there is a clt in between and this is a common sense thing that this clt must have used your normal nrb this clt must have used your normal nrb so don't expect don't expect any normal nrb of 325000 325000 in the death state calculation because already been used by clt okay but right now examiner is asking to calculate the tax on death state only examiner is asking to calculate the tax on death state only okay what i have written here iht on state iht on state what is the value of state 2 million ready made from the question the the value of state is 2 million just copy paste from the from the question now was there any residence nrb available yes yes i taught you all the conditions of residence nrb has have been met so just simply deduct 150000 and there is no seven year accumulation principle for this residence nrb there is no seven year accumulation principle for residence nrb okay now now the next step is normal nrb we all know in this question normal nrb at the time of death was 325000 available yes 325000 available but you know res for residence nrb you have to look 7 years back you have to look 7 years back and as this is death state as this is death state calculation so you will stay you will stand at the at the date of death and you will look 7 years back so yes 7 years back there is there is big elephant <laughs> this big elephant of clt 48125 this giant giant clt is there so obviously this clt must have consumed your nrb so no more no more normal nrb is available no more normal nrb is available so what you do 200 2 million sorry 2 million less 150000 is 180800180000 now the question is sir what is the tax rate on death there is only one tax rate that is 40% okay 1850 times 40% 1850 times 0.4 is 740000 this is 740000 look at the working look at the working just giving you 10 seconds and don't think about taper leap now don't think over taper leap because there is no taper leap on death state taper leap is only available for pat and cld
are you getting please reply on chat box come on come on one quick reply one quick reply in chat box i need engagement i need engagement please one single reply on your chat box Okay, now one last question for one last question for IHT and then we have to move for that. Okay, because we have very restricted time and there are a lot of things. So your next question is Afia. Afia, I hope you remember the rules. Let me tell you, IHT is calculated on decrease in wealth of donor. IHT is calculated on decrease in wealth of donor. And I taught you in the beginning in the first very first slide how to calculate decrease in wealth of donor. There were two lines. There were two lines wealth of donor before gift less wealth of donor after gift. Okay, let's do it. Afia died on 29th November 2019. Don't forget this date important date. This is the date of death. She had made number of gifts during during her lifetime as follows the first gift. Afia's first gift was made on 14 September 2014. 14 September 2014. When she gave when she gave 6,500 pound one ordinary shares in Kasava Limited, an unquoted investment company, to her daughter, to her daughter, for gift to gift to person, gift to person. This is bad. Gift to person. This is bad. Now, sometimes, sometimes like this question, you have to calculate the decrease in wealth of donor. In sometimes they give you ready-made and sometimes you have to calculate the decrease in wealth of donor. Let's calculate Now before the transfer my dear before the transfer Afia owned 8,000 shares of 8,000 shares out of Kasava limited 10,000 ordinary shares now hold Just think there is no gift right now here. Ha she has not given any gift. So she had already had 8,000 shares so for the first line that is wealth of wealth of donor before gift we will be using we will be using 8000 shares okay and tell me 8000 shares is 80 percent of 10,000 right 8000 shares is 80 percent of 10,000 that means his existing holding his existing holding is 80 percent okay now on 14 september kasava limited shares worth worth three pounds for 15 percent holding seven pounds for 65 percent holding and eight pounds for 80 percent holding very very easy don't ruin it don't ruin it go go slow 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 you will you will get it now wait she had she already had eight thousand shares no she has not given any gift right now she has not given any gift yet she's planning okay so right now she has eight thousand shares and eight thousand means eighty percent holding and what's the market value of 80 percent holding is pound eight per share okay let's start let's start see the screen see the screen see the screen the first line wealth of donor before gift wealth of donor before gift sorry the writing is a little bit small she already first look at the first line she already had eight thousand shares she already had 8,000 shares and what's the worth of these 8,000 shares 80% holding it's pound 8 per share So 8,000 times pound 8 8,000 times pound 8 is 64,000 8,000 times pound 8 is 64,000 right Less now wealth of donor after gift now just think from from 8,000 he she just gifted 6,500 shares from these 8000 shares she just gifted eight uh, uh, 6500 shares now what what quantity what quantity she has now only 1500 shares she has she has only 1500 shares so now wealth of donor after gift will be calculated on 1500 shares my dear student boys and girls 1500 shares means 15% holding 1500 shares mean 15% holding 
so for 15 percent holding look at the screen the share price is three pounds per share so what will be the wealth of donor after a gift it's 1500 multiply by pound three 1500 multiply by pound three is 4500 now simply deduct 64,000 minus 4,500 is 59,500 is 59,500. This 59,500 is your pet. This 59,500 is your pet. Okay. Why is your pet? Because she didn't give this to trust. She gave to directly to daughter. She gave this gift directly to daughter. Okay. So 59,500 is the amount of pet before any annual exemptions. Bef before any annual exemptions let's see what the examiner is asking come on let's see please please concentrate boys and girls concentrate uh what is the see what is the gross chargeable uh, i'm reading question number one what is the gross chargeable transfer value after all exemptions after all exemption means we have to deduct we have to deduct annual exemption as well we have to deduct annual exemption as well if you see if you see my dear if you see before 14 september 14 means 14 15 fiscal year 14 september 2014 means 14 15 fiscal year can you see any 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 and any gifts in last fiscal year can you see any gifts in last fiscal year no so that means last fiscal year 3000 annual exemption and this fiscal year 3000 annual exemption so three and three 3 plus 3 is 6,000. 3 plus 3 is 6,000. Okay. So, what is the amount of annual exemption which we are going to use? Is 6,000. Okay. So, 59,500 minus 6 is 5. Is 5, 3. 5, double, 0. 5, 3. 5, double, 0. Is 5, 3, 5, double, 0 okay right so this is your answer so this is your answer five three five zero zero is the answer of question number one five three five double zero is the answer of question number one okay okay right uh, now you may ask sir sir what about what about the marriage exemption there is no marriage exemption right now because nothing is written about marriage or wedding right right now next next point number two point number two afia then made afia i'm reading point number two afia then made various other gifts such that on 26 january uh, one more thing just think afia is alive right now the in these stories afia is alive no more dead right uh afia then made various other gifts such as at 3rd, 26 january 2019 the total gross chargeable value of all transfer made in the previous seven years see in the previous seven years was 220,000, comprising potentially exempt transfer of 100 and chargeable lifetime transfer of 120. I have a question. She is not dead right now. She is alive. And they are saying in last seven years, she did pet, she did pet of 100,000 and CLT of 120,000. She did pet of 100,000 and CLT of 120,000 in last seven years. And he's alive. She's alive. Sorry. She's alive. You Can you tell me out of these 100 and 120, which event is chargeable? Which event is chargeable? only only clt because if she's alive there is no tax on pet in if she's alive there is no ihd is computed on pet okay so in last seven years in last seven years they have only computed they they have only computed ihd on 120 000 not 100 000 okay so if we need to if we need to calculate any 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 ihd on clt now and you have to see last seven years. So in last seven years, only 120,000 is chargeable. In last seven years, only 120,000 is chargeable.
Okay. I think uh, uh, for one second my internet got disconnected, but it's okay right now. Now, let's on third. Wait, 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 one second. Wait a minute, please. हाँ वो एक सेकंड के लिए डिस्कनेक्ट हो गया था शायद अब हो गया ना ठीक ठीक ओके थैंक यू थैंक यू नाउ पॉइंट नंबर थ्री इस कनेक्टेड टू पॉइंट नंबर टू पॉइंट नंबर थ्री इस कनेक्टेड टू पॉइंट नंबर टू On 27 January 2019, on 27 January 2019, Afia made a transfer value after all exemptions. Thank God, annual exemption now already deducted of 400,000 to a trust. To a trust, this is CLT. 400,000 to a trust, this is CLT. Okay. Afia paid the inheritance. Afia means donor. Afia means donor. The inheritance tax arising from this gift. That means lifetime IHT on CLT. Life. Time IHT on CLT for this for this for this event will be paid by donor. What will be the consequences? What will be the consequences? Number one, first of all, first of all, you have to use the tax rate of 25%. And second, second, you have to do grossing up. Second, you have to do grossing up. But my dear students, look at this date. This is 27 January 2019, and this is 26 January 2019. so they have clearly said that in last 7 years in last 7 years there there is one clt of 120000 so that clt must have consumed your nrb okay so for nrb deduction for nrb deduction you have to deduct you have to deduct 1 lakh 20000 don't forget okay let's read the third requirement let's read the third requirement what they are asking sorry second requirement how much how much i lifetime iht is payable how much lifetime iht payable on the gift to the trust on 27 january 2019 on 27 january 2019 if you go slow you will understand listen okay this is the working this is the working the amount of clt was 4 lakh the amount of clt after all exemptions that means already annual exemptions deducted was 4 lakh right and you can see you can see in this 1920 or 1819 fiscal 1890 fiscal year your normal nrb is 325000 your normal nrb is 3 lakh 25000 but always always dear students for nrb is always for 7 years nrb is always for 7 years so you just see 7 years back you just see 7 years 7 years back you see 7 years back and in 7 years in last 7 years yes you calculated tax on something you calculated tax on something there was some clt there was some clt we just read the question and that clt was 1 lakh 20000 okay so you have to reduce your nrb with 1 lakh 20000 so 325000 less 120 325000 less 120 is i think is i think 205 is i think yes 205 okay so deduct 4 lakh deduct 205000 from 4 lakh it will be 190 5000 and now as the donor afia as the donor afia is paying the lifetime iht so the tax rate will be 25% so 19500 times 25% times 25% what is the number nine let me calculate it wait it's 48750 that's it that's it That's it. 
48750 you can see you can see screen is in front of you 48750 is the answer uh, the answer of question number two is 48750 it's not that difficult just trust on yourself be confident okay now this is a general 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 question question number 3 general question come on which four of the following items will be included in or deducted from in short it means it's relevant to death state which four of the following items are is relevant to death state so listen main residence yes obviously you include main residence funeral expenses yes you deduct funeral expenses i taught you unpaid gambling debts no 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 more gambling debts no more gambling debts because you don't receive any consideration in the life shares held in individual savings account yes also <clears throat> individual saving account is exempt asset for cdd purpose but for iht it's not exempt for iht it's not exempt then 10000 held in gilts yes you have to add gilt you have to add definitely you have to add uh, even the gilt is exempt for cdd but not for iht endowment mortgage never never endowment endowment mortgage is never deducted from that state because we are no more responsible for paying this endowment mortgage insurance company pays this insurance company pays this okay okay so this was easy part done now i will teach you something new which i didn't teach you right now in the revisions one new topic that is transfer of nrb transfer of nrb look at me transfer of nrb you know what what if if husband or wife husband or wife one of them died first for example wife died first and then after a few years husband died so if wife had any unused nrb listen carefully wife had or wife left any unused nrb at the time of death so husband husband debts debts death tax is working we can use that unused nrb but how but how first step first you have to calculate first you have to go 10 years back let us say wife died 10 years back let us say wife or husband died 10 years back so you have to go 10 years back and you have to calculate listen my words important words you have to calculate the unused nrb percentage you have to calculate unused nrb percentage using the old data and that unused nrb percentage will be applied on new nrb of today's that is 325000 and you can claim that nrb this is the law this is the rule very important even examiner wrote this in his in his comments as well again repeat for example apia is a lady so husband uh, husband husband died 10 years before okay so you you should go 10 years back and using the 10 years back data the old data first you have to calculate first you have to calculate the unused nrb percentage unused nrb percentage using existing data and that unused nrb percentage will be applied will be applied on new latest nrb latest nrb of 325000 and then you can claim that okay this is the first thing second one more thing i taught you today residence nrb residence nrb if if husband died 10 years back and he didn't use any residence nrb and obviously there was no residence nrb at that time so no issue that means he didn't use residence nrb so that residence nrb can be can be claimed on wife's death provided 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 wife is meeting all the conditions which i taught you 
provided wife is meeting all the condition which i taught you okay so now be very careful don't look here and there look at me with full concentration come on this paragraph let me let me zoom the screen afia's husband see this is the story afia was the real lady now afia's husband had died on 1st june 2008 almost 12 11 12 years back leaving an estate valued at 2 lakh he left 46800 to daughter yes this is the chargeable thing if you leave anything for your daughter or son this is chargeable and the balance to afia balance to afia husband wife transfer spouse exemption husband wife transfer are not are never chargeable at, at all so at the time at the time of at the time of his death in 2008 the only chargeable state was 46800 the only chargeable state was 46800 now wait he had never made that old that husband he had never made any gifts during lifetime no more pet no more clt of husband so just think at the time at the time of husband death in 2008 the only chargeable state was 46800 now wait 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 we are going back 12 years back the nil rate band look, look at here the nil rate band for the tax year 0809 is 312 in the year husband died that is 89 that is 0809 that is 2008 at that time what was the nrb the nrb at that at that time was 312 now you just think you just think please look at me out of this 312 how much amount was should must be used how much amount must be used only 46800 only 46800 was chargeable at that time only 46800 was chargeable at that time that means there was some amount unused at that time there was some amount must be unused at that time so first first you have to calculate that unused percentage first you have to calculate that unused percentage unused percentage and then you have to apply that percentage in today's today's time i am just silent 10 seconds you read it 10 20 seconds you read it please Okay, 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 okay. This, 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 this. Just read the requirement first. What is the total amount of nil rate band? What is the total amount of nil rate band? And they have written s maybe two nil rate bands that Afia could claim in respect of unused nil rate band on the death of her husband. That means how much will be transferred to Afia? Not Afia's own. just talking about the husband's nrb which she can use at the time of death let's do it when husband died in in 2008 the total nrb at that time was 312 when husband died in when husband died in 2008 the total nrb at that time was 312 husband used only 46800 use your calculator so has at that time the unused amount was 265 at that Time the unused amount was 265 200. Okay, now let's calculate the unused percentage. Let's calculate the unused percentage. Look at there. Look at here. Look at here. Total NRB at that time was 312, out of which 265 200 was unused. Total NRB at that time was 312 triple zero, out of which 265 200 was unused. Can you multiply by 100? This percentage is 85%. This percentage is 85%. Okay. now now you calculated the 85% this 85% you have to apply on the current data on the current data on the current data right now the nrb is 325000 so 325000 times 85% is 276250 276250 this is the normal nrb which she received which she received from from her husband i'm uh, i'm quite for Uh, 30 seconds because of azan
Now, so we calculated unused percentage using existing data 12 years back and we applied it on the new NRV of 325,000. So one thing, one thing, please look at me, one thing, the normal NRV she received from husband is 276250. Now, you, you just read the story, at that time, this, the husband, didn't have any main residence or anything so definitely his his residence and rb is also unused so residence and rb will, will also be transferred residence and rb will also be transferred to wife so that is 150000 so total total nrbc total nrb she can use from the diseased husband is 426250 see 276250 plus 150000 276250 plus plus 150000 that is 426250 okay the total nrb now the question is sir did afia met the condition hers did afia herself met the condition of residence nrb yes you can read the question you can read the question let me show you let me show you see these lines wait on her death these lines these lines see on her death on her death afia left an estate valued of 525000 including her main residence worth 375000 to her children to her children downward 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 to her children okay going downward in the generation main residence plus she died afia died after 6 april 2017 so all conditions of residence and rb was met by was met by afia right okay that's why she can use her husband as well husband's residence and rb as well okay so the answer for question number four the answer for question number four is the answer for question number four is four what is the amount what i told you i think it's was wait 426250 that is d okay now we are taking a uh, maghrib prayers break seven, seven six to seven minutes maghrib prayers break and then 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 we'll we'll do this last part this fifth part a very simple it's a date and then we'll do value added tax okay so be active be active get yourself refreshed in this break six to seven minute break for you guys
okay welcome back welcome back for this last session now for this last uh, after break session <laughs> now now we have to revise one thing here the payment date payment date of taxes okay for both the lifetime iht for both the lifetime inheritance tax on gift to the trust on 27 january 2019 and the tax arising on afia's state afia's state select the due date payment for the from the following first of all giving you a good recap listen for all debt taxes for all debt taxes debt taxes means iht on pet additional iht on clt feel it feel it additional iht on clt and the third thing is iht on debt state for all debt taxes there is one due date for all debt taxes there is only one due date and what is that due date six months six months from the end of the month from the end of the death month that's it six years from the end of the month in which in which the person died okay so in this question tax on state sorry tax on debt state tell me the tell me the date of death i think the date of death was november wait the date of death was november 19 let me check let me check the date of death was 29th november 19 29th november 19 okay so easy easy thing first easy thing first 29th november 19 just end the month just go to end of the month of november that is 30th november and now count 6 months after november december january feb march april and may so the date is 31st may 2020 for this Thirty first May twenty twenty. Thirty first of May twenty twenty for this. Thirty first May twenty twenty for this. Okay, right. Thirty first May twenty twenty for this death that death state tax. Okay, so this was for the death state. Now there is one tax which is paid when you are alive. There is one tax which is paid when you are alive, and that is. lifetime iht on clt lifetime iht on clt and that is a little bit technical little bit not technical it's lengthy okay and in that case you have to you have to go for two dates two dates you have to mark two dates and opt the later later date later date first first of all first tell me the date of the date of this clt the date of this clt is 27th of january 2019 wait the date of this clt is 27th january 2019 okay identify the fiscal year come on 27 january 27th january 2019 falls in 1819 fiscal year 27th january 2019 falls in 1819 fiscal year okay now let me tell you the first date the first date it the first date is 30th april the first due date is 30th april following the end of tax year following the end of tax year in which gift arises so gift arise is in 1819 and after 1819 the 30th april is with 30th april comes that is 30th april 2019 30th april 2019 so first of all this date keep it in mind this date 30th april 2019 now second date second date listen 6 months 6 months from the end of the month in which gift arises Six months from the end of the month in which gift arises, gift arises in January. Gift gift arises in January 2019. Gift arises in January 2019. Now end the January, come to end of January and count six months. After January, Feb, March, April, May, June and July. July. So the second date is 31st of July. 2019 the second date is 31st july 2019 my dear student my dear student these are the two dates these are the two dates we have calculated 30th april 19 and 31st july 19 yeah, now you tell me which date is later 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 which which date is later this is later so this is this will be your due date this will be your due date for lifetime iht this will be your due date for lifetime iht that's it this will be your due date for lifetime iht
okay so that's the end that's the end of our that's the end of our ist and now we are moving towards the value added tax now we are moving towards the value added tax be very active value added tax is also very important and very very logical theoretical area logical theories are there in in that topic come on value added tax the first thing the first thing related to value added tax this is indirect tax this is indirect tax the the first uh, you studied lot of direct taxes what is direct taxes for direct tax taxes the burden is bear, uh, is to be borne by the person who is who is earning the income right and for indirect tax for indirect taxes like value added taxes the burden is to be borne by the one who consume the end user the end user okay now the first thing please look at me the first thing the tax department divides goods and services into three three categories tax department divides the goods and services into three categories the first is standard rated goods the first is standard standard rated goods what are standard rated goods look at me look at me look at my video please listen let us say government government mark government mark this this pen government mark this pen as standard rated goods okay so now if you do any expenses if you incur any expenses or you buy inventory to make to make standard rated goods to make standard rated goods and you pay any vat you pay any vat on this standard rated goods in making of this standard rated good you can easily claim input vat yes yes you can easily claim input vat and the second thing and when you sell and when you sell look at me look at me please boys and girls when you sell this standard rated goods when you sell this standard rated good to any customer you will charge normal 20% output vat from that customer okay so what is standard rated good i repeat let us say this this pen is a standard rated this pen is a standard rated so if you buy any inventory or you incur any expenses related relate, relate to in in making of this standard rated good and you paid the vat so you can easily claim that vat you, you can easily claim input vat but when you sell but when you sell this standard rated good to the other customer you will also charge normal 20% output vat read the lines read the lines i have written all this okay now the second second types of goods and services are zero rated zero rated what do you mean by zero rated please please be active please my dear students look at me zero zero rated. let us say government made this pen zero rated government stamped government stamped this pen as zero rated goods okay now whatever expenses you incur or whatever inventory you buy inventory to buy or you ex incur any expenses in making of this zero rated goods and you paid vat whatever vat you have paid in making of this zero rated goods you can easily claim input vat yes 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 you can claim input vat for the preparation of zero rated goods yes but but when you sell zero rated goods to any party but when you sell zero rated goods to any party you won't charge any output vat you won't charge any output vat from that party okay the third the third the third types of supplies are called exempt supplies the third type of supplies are called exempt exempt supplies okay what is exempt supplies listen let us say government made this pen exempt government made this pen exempt now if you incur any expenses or if you if you pay and if you if you have paid any vat in making in making of this 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 the this, this exempt goods this exempt good and you paid vat for for the making of this good you cannot claim input vat you cannot you cannot claim input vat the first thing and when you sell when you sell this pen when you sell this exempt good to the third party you won't charge any percentage output vat from them you won't charge any percentage output vat from them okay so you must know these three categories now for your information standard rated standard rated and zero rated goods are collectively called taxable supplies standard rated and zero rated goods are collectively called taxable supplies don't forget 
okay now one thing registration no one thing is registration okay first of all if you have your pen and paper you can write two lines only registered trader write uh, write few lines only registered trader can charge output VAT on sales only registered trader can charge output VAT on sales what does it mean for example i am a seller and you are a buyer and i am not registered with the tax department i am not authorized with the tax department and i am charging value added tax from you guys so this is a crime this is basically a crime i am not authorized i am not authorized i am not the agent of government and still i am charging vat from you guys that means this is a crime crime i am a liar then okay so only only registered trader can charge output vat on sales the second line now write the second line only only registered trader can claim input vat only registered trader can claim input vat that means if you want to claim input vat first of all you must be registered first of all you must be registered unregistered guys are not allowed even to enter in the tax department unregistered guys are not allowed to enter in the tax department these are very basic things i'm sure i'm sure you know you know this before now what is the topic of registration there are two types of registration there are two consequences of registration number one is compulsory compulsory means that you have no option once you reach a limit once you reach a limit you have to you have to you have to register right okay now the first of all we are doing compulsory registration compulsory registration there are two tests for compulsory registration there are two tests for compulsory registration there are two tests look at here look at here one is historic test and the second is future test one is historic test and the second is second is future future test one is historic test and the second is future test okay now what is historic test what is historic test let me let me tell you with numbers and you all have to you all you all have to support me okay listen for example for example i started business on 1st january i started business on 1st of january i started business on 1st of january listen in the first month my taxable supplies is only 2000 only 2000 now look at this number 85,000. Look at this number 85,000. Okay, one thing. Uh, just confirm me on the WhatsApp group that the compulsory registration limit is 85,000 or 83,000. Can anybody confirm on the WhatsApp group? On the WhatsApp group, confirm me. Because I'm not sure right now. It's 85 or 80, in previous years, it was 83. It's 85,000 or 83 for compulsory. Okay, 85, right? Okay, done. Thanks. Now, listen you started business on 1st of january you started business on 1st of january right now you have to you have to check this your sales in the first month the sale is only 2000 in the second month 2 plus 2 it's 4000 still it's less than 85 then add 1 4 plus 1 5 5 plus 2 7 7 plus 3 10 10 plus 4 14 14 plus 5 19 19 plus 6 25 25 plus 2 27 28 30 and 31 c to 12 months have passed 12 months have passed but still still you didn't cross still you didn't cross how much 85 so what's the total sales of this of this law of this of this 12 months is 31 is 31 okay did i calculate 31 right you can also you can all you have, you have to help me in this edition okay sometime i forgot now once 12 months has done 12 months has gone and still you haven't crossed 85 so now you will add one new month and you subtract one old month you add one new month and you subtract one old month so you will what's the new sales 20 you will add 20 you will add 20 and you will subtract 2 you will add 20 of january and you will subtract 2 so 31 plus 20 is 51 less 2 is 49 49 
dear student still 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 you haven't crossed still you haven't crossed 85 okay add one more month add one more new month and deduct and deduct one last one last old month so 49 plus 40 the sale of this new month is 40 49 plus 40 40 and minus 2 what is the number tell me 49 plus 40 is uh, uh, 89 minus 2 is 87 okay 87 now 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 listen my commentary listen my commentary please listen my commentary look at here at the end of fab at the end of fab the trader realized that at the end of fab the trader realized that his last month that his sorry that his last 12 months that his last 12 months taxable supplies taxable sales crossed 85000 at the end of the fab trader realized that his last 12 months that his last 12 months taxable supplies cross cross 85000 now what he has to do at the end of fab now he has one month he has one month to apply he has one month to apply that means the whole march he has to apply he has to apply for registration to tax department by the end of march okay and tax department will make him register will make him active registered person from first april from first april okay i repeat my words at the end of fab at the end of fab trader realized that his last 12 months his last 12 months taxable supplies crossed crossed 85000 now what he has to do he has one month he has one month from the end of fab to apply for registration that means he has to apply before 31st march and tax department will make him active registered guy from 1st of april from 1st of april so this is so this is basically this is basically this is basically historic test this is basically historic test okay now there is one more test which we call it future test which is which is future test and future test is only for one one month future test you can listen orally future test is only for one month if in any month if in any one month listen future test is not for 12 months is only for one month if in any one month your taxable supplies crossed 85000 your taxable supplies crossed 85000 then before the end of that month you have to apply before the end of that month you have to apply for registration and tax department will make you active will make you active tax active registered guy from the beginning of that month from the beginning of the same month from the beginning of the same month this is what we call this is what we call a uh, future test this is what we call future test so there are so there are two compulsory two compulsory tests one is historic test and the second is future test one is historic test and second is future test okay now listen 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 this is what is compulsory registration there is one more option that is voluntary registration voluntary registration voluntary registration means that that you you are not up to 85000 guy you are your your status is less than 85000 but still but still you wish you wish to register yourself still still it's your uh, your heart wants to register you want to register you want to be a registered guy okay go go and get yourself registered but before doing voluntary registration don't forget some consequences that that listen let's look at here that after be a registered guy your products will be expensive to customers your product will be expensive to customers and especially if your customers are general public if your customers are general public then they might they might they might shift to other other shops they might shift to other shops okay so be careful with voluntary registration now there is one thing which we call VAT period. There is one thing which we call VAT period. VAT period is quarter. VAT period is quarter. That means we have to present ourselves. We have to present ourselves in, in, in front of tax department after every quarter. After every quarter. Say for example, say for example, your VAT period is January, Feb, March. Your VAT period is January, Feb, March. So for this quarter, what is the due date? What is the due date for VAT payment? 
after the end of the quarter one month seven days one month seven days one month plus seven days one month plus seven days one month plus seven days that means for this quarter january feb march the due date for the due date for vat return filing and vat payment is 7th of may 7th of may so don't forget vat reporting is normally done on quarterly basis and what is the due date is one month plus seven day after the end of that quarter one month plus seven day after the end of that quarter okay right okay now there is one thing which we call surcharge period surcharge period there is one thing which we call surcharge period there is one bit one thing which we call surcharge period what is surcharge period listen for example for example in for last many years you are an up-to-date guy up-to-date guy means you pay your vat on time and you file your return you file your vat return on time you pay your vat on time and you file your return on time listen 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 but for the quarter ended march this is january feb march january feb march first time in your whole life you did a mistake first time in your whole life you did a mistake open your eyes what you did you paid vat late you paid your vat late for this march quarter okay or you paid the return late one of the mistake normally these two things are done on the same day normally these two things are done on the same day so for the quarter ended march let us say this is 019 for the quarter ended march 19 for the first time in life you paid vat late or you filed the return late so what will be the consequences with the first mistake they just they just say they just say don't do it again and they give you a warning they give you a warning so they they make they make a surcharge period they they put you in a web they put you in a web of surcharge period that watching period they say we are watching you okay so when you do mistake for the first time in the life the just a surcharge period is extended for next 12 months that means now you have to spend your life in surcharge period okay now as you are a human being so you did you did mistake you did mistake again you did mistake again for the quarter ended for the quarter ended june you did mistake again that means after initial warning after initial warning this is your first mistake after initial warning this is your first mistake so what will happen now your surcharge period will be extended for next 12 months and you have to pay two percent penalty you have to pay two percent penalty okay now if you do if you repeat your mistake again again your surcharge will be again your surcharge period will be extended to 12 months from the end of that quarter and then you have to pay five percent then 10 percent and so on and so on okay hope you remember this surcharge period topic sometime it comes okay now this is something very important and something very technical for students as well i will give some time on this topic okay surcharge period i just gave you a quick recap don't forget these are revision days these are not normal classes please don't forget this thing and it's a very very big course now text point first of all try to understand what is text point we all know this we all know this for january feb march we all know this thing that for january feb march quarter transactions we have to pay VAT on 7th May. I just told you. I repeat, we all know this for January, Feb, March quarters transaction. 
we have to pay VAT on 7th May. This we already know, we have studied. But for which transactions? Cash sales, credit sales, what is the what is the criteria? I mean, how will how you will recognize that that which transactions to be included in which quarter? For VAT purpose, which transactions are to be included for January, Feb, March? For this purpose, you have to calculate tax point. You have to calculate tax point for each and every transaction. If the tax point, if the tax point for any transaction lies in January, Feb, March, if the tax point for January, uh, if the tax point for any transaction lies in January, Feb, March, that means that transaction belongs to January, Feb, March. That means that transaction belongs to January, Feb, March, and for that transaction, you have to pay VAT on 7th May. Got it? So from now onwards, be very, be very watchful on this tax point. For every transaction, you have to think about tax point, whether the tax point lies in this quarter or not. If the tax point lies in that quarter, then yes, then yes, that transaction belongs to this quarter. Otherwise, no. Otherwise, no. Okay. Now, the question is, sir, 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 how do we calculate the tax point? It's not difficult. You have to concentrate. Please, you have to concentrate. How do we calculate the tax point? I'm telling you the tax point for goods right now. Tax point for goods. Look, look at me. First of all, first of all, my dear students, you have to calculate BTP, basic tax point. First of all, you have to calculate BTP, the basic tax point. Look at here, look at here, my video. Basic tax point is the day. Basic tax point is the date when you deliver your goods. Basic tax point for goods is the date when you deliver your goods to customer, when you deliver your goods to customer. So let us say this is your BTP, you mark it, you mark it BTP, okay? You mark the BTP, the date you delivered goods to customer. Now, second thing, second thing you have, if payment, if payment is re received before BTP, if payment is received before BTP, then the receipt date is your actual tax point, for example, if you have received advance here if you have if you have received advance payment here then for this advance payment your atp is the date advance received atp is the date when you receive the advance atp your actual tax point is the date when you receive that when you receive the advance payment okay but let us say just assume we haven't received any advance we haven't received received any advance or we just receive 50% advance. We just receive 50% advance. So 50% 50 50 transaction has already been accounted for using ATP on the advance date. Now, the last thing, come again to BTP and there is a 14 days rule. Come again to BTP, there is a 14 days rule. You have to check whether you have issued invoice in next 14 days whether you have issued invoice in next 14 days from btp if yes if yes then the invoice issuing date will be your actual tax point invoice issuing date will be your actual tax point and if and if you are very smart or you are trying to be very smart with tax department and you are issuing wet invoice late you are issuing wet invoice late means after 14 days 15 16 days 18 days 20 days then in that case your btp will be your atp in that case your btp will be your atp i repeat i repeat no sure i repeat i'm repeating uh first of all you have to check btp btp basic tax point is the date when you deliver the goods basic tax point is the date when you deliver the goods you mark it second thing you have to check whether you have received any advance if yes if you have received any advance then the advance receiving date will be your actual tax point for that advance amount okay third step again you come to basic tax point and you check and you check that whether you have issued the invoice within 14 days of btp if yes then invoice issuing date will be your actual tax point if no if no if no means you are issuing invoice late you are trying to be very smart so tax department says don't be very smart and then your BTP will be will be your ATP will be your ATP. Now, 
you might have studied you might you you definitely sorry using wrong word you definitely studied these three schemes there are three scheme in your vat value added tax topic annual accounting scheme cash accounting scheme and flat rate scheme there are three schemes in in your course for payment of tax annual accounting scheme cash accounting scheme and flat rate scheme what is annual accounting scheme first of all annual accounting scheme for is for those traders who can't bear the burden who can't bear the administrative burden because if you don't apply annual accounting scheme you have to pay four four vat returns every year because the normal reporting is quarterly reporting we have just studied the normal reporting is quarterly reporting so just think there is a company and they are very busy people they don't have time so normally normally they file their return late normally they file their return late and when they file their return late they have to bear the consequences of surcharge period they have to bear the penalties of surcharge period and that is very very uh, very very damaging for them so one day that manager called tax department that we 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 are not happy with you guys we did mistake by doing registration so tax department said that for busy people like you for busy people like you there is a there is an excellent scheme for you guys and that is annual accounting scheme there is an excellent scheme for you guys that is annual accounting scheme now first clear one misperception first clear one misperception people think annual means there is only one tax payment no 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 and oh no 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 annual does not mean one tax payment annual means only one tax return annual accounting scheme means you have to file only one tax return annual accounting scheme means you have to file only one tax return every year okay so the first advantage of this scheme you don't have to file four tax return only one tax return for to be filed that means your administrative burden will be reduced your administrative burden will be reduced now the next thing next thing please look at me these are very very key areas if you want to operate you if you want to practically solve annual accounting scheme always first point point out always first point out the date of joining the scheme always first point out the date of joining the scheme let us say in my example in my this is this example is made by me in my example i am saying that i joined the scheme on 1st january in exams maybe they give you a different date feb march april any date in my example i am saying that i joined the scheme on 1st january i joined the scheme on 1st of january okay so what you have to do in this scheme when when you join this scheme you have to pay you have to pay vat vat through poa payment on account you have to pay a vat through payment on account payment on account means this payment on account is calculated on the basis of last year vat this payment on account is calculated on the basis of last year the last full year actual net vat payable okay so this is the scheme joining date and in the question you will have ready made last year's actual net vat payable is 1 lakh so how will you calculate your poa how will you calculate your poa payment on account just simply last year net vat payable multiply by 10% just learn this 10% this 10% you have to learn 100000 times 10% is 10000 okay 100000 times 10% is your is 10000 okay first of all you have calculated poa now how to operate from the scheme joining date from the scheme joining date count 4 months let us say i joined the scheme from january so from the fourth month january feb march april this fourth month you pay first poa then second poa then third then fourth fifth sixth seventh eighth and ninth open your eyes open your eyes how to pay poa from let us say we joined the scheme on first of january so from the fourth month you have to start paying poa we joined from january to so the fourth month will be april so april may june july august september october november and december total nine poa we have made total nine poa we have made okay with reference to last year and what is the total of nine poa in this question 10000 per poa 10000 per poa multiply by 9 is 90000 
टेन थाउजेंड पर पी ओ ए मल्टीप्लाई बाय नाइन इज नाइनटी थाउजेंड ओके राइट अब नाउ नाउ यू हैव टू कैलकुलेट बैलेंसिंग पेमेंट नाउ यू हैव टू कैलकुलेट बैलेंसिंग पेमेंट जस्ट थिंक दैट द होल ईयर हैज बीन पास सो यू ऑल्सो गॉट द एक्चुअल वैट पेबल फॉर दिस ईयर you also get got the actual vat payable for this year like let us say the actual vat payable for this year came out to be 140000 the actual vat payable for this year came out to be 140000 the actual vat payable came out to be 140000 now you just think your actual net vat payable to government is 140 but you have already paid you have already paid some amount through poa how much amount you paid through poa 10000 multiply by 9 payments so 90000 90000 140 so your balancing payment will be your balancing payment my dear student will be 50000 okay now uh, students may ask respected sir kindly tell me what is the due date of this balancing payment kindly tell me what is the due date of this balancing payment okay so from the end of from the end of after see we joined the scheme on january so after completing 12 months we joined the scheme on january after completing 12 months you have 2 months that means end of feb you have to you have to pay the balancing payment plus plus vat return vat return balancing payment plus vat return now you can see this big picture now you can see this big picture this big picture says only one vat return only one vat return in the whole year so automatically this is the advantage of this scheme that 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 your administrative burden will be reduced that your administrative burden will be reduced okay right and don't forget if you are in this scheme then you have to pay vat through poa if you are in this scheme if you are following this scheme you have to pay vat through poa and how poa is a is calculated using the last years last years actual net vat payable using the last years actual net vat payable right one more thing and that you you must have done the conditions don't forget these these numbers conditions if you want to enter in this scheme first of all your all your old dues and all everything is up to date you are cleared guy number 2 when the day you are entering the next 12 months your expected taxable turnover must be less than 1350 1.35 million 1.35 million this 1.35 million is the next 12 months expected turnover and very dangerous thing is 1.6 million let us say by any means you entered in this scheme but if your first 12 months actual sales if your first 12 months actual sales cross 16 lakh if your first 12 months actual sales cross 16 lakh then what they will do they will they will look at it look at it they will pick you and they will throw you they will throw you out of the scheme they will pick you and they will throw you out of the scheme they will throw you out of the scheme right now see i have written annual accounting scheme beneficial for those who can't file return on time now the second scheme now the second scheme boys and girls we have cash accounting scheme we have cash accounting scheme what is cash accounting scheme in very short 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 i am explaining you in very short listen cash if you if you come to cash accounting scheme all theory read the line all theory of tax point becomes null and void you know i taught you the 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 theory of tax point the invoice date the btp everything becomes null and void forget it if you apply if you apply cash accounting scheme if you apply cash accounting scheme your tax point becomes your receipt date your tax point becomes your receipt date that means if you receive cash from your customer then pay to government 
if you receive cash from government then pay to government no need to pay on invoice basis no need to pay vat from your own pocket no need to block your money so what are the advantages of this advantages of cash accounting scheme number 1 automatic bad debt relief automatic bad debt relief i hope i hope i'm i'm teaching students right now you guys are uh, next month is your paper next month is your paper so you have studied something i uh, definitely you have studied a lot there is a topic which is called bad debt relief in normal circumstances when you even when you don't use even when you don't use cash accounting scheme still still you get bad debt relief still you get bad debt relief but i hope you remember for bad debt relief you have to wait for 6 months for bad debt relief there is a condition i hope you remember <laughs> i hope you remember there is there is there is a waiting period of 6 months so still the 6 months is not not a good time who can wait 6 months i can't wait 6 months so in cash accounting scheme the rule is if you get cash from customer then pay to government otherwise don't pay so no need to block your payment so automatic bad debt relief is there automatic bad debt relief is there and second point try to use your brain now beneficial for trader it is highly beneficial for trader doing credit sales on high credit terms there are there are sellers who sells on give who give long credit to their customers who give long credit to their customers so they normally they normally deliver goods now and they collect after 4 5 months so if they if they shift to cash accounting scheme automatically automatically their 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 vat payments will be deferred their vat payments will be deferred so there will be some cash flow benefit for them them there will be some cash flow benefit for them okay so in short in in short let me summarize it in short cash accounting scheme is beneficial for those guys who are doing credit sales in short in short cash accounting scheme is beneficial for those guys who are doing credit sales who are doing credit sales okay now one thing i forgot to tell you for cash accounting scheme the conditions 1350000 and 16 lakh 1.35 million and 1.6 million limits are same so the limits for cash accounting scheme and annual accounting scheme is exactly exactly same exactly same okay now the third now the third third scheme the third scheme is flat rate scheme let me give you some introduction and this is very interesting flat rate scheme for, are for small traders very poor small traders not for big people and the evidence for this is when when i uh, i will tell you the limit the limit is 150000 you know the limit for annual accounting scheme was 1.35 million and 1.6 million but for flat rate scheme the limit is very low very low it's around 150000 and 230000 150000 and 230000 right okay now let me explain you in a different way this scheme look at my video not just the screen my face look at my face if you join an flat rate scheme if you join flat rate scheme still 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 your dealing with suppliers and customers will remain same if you join flat rate scheme if you join flat rate scheme your dealing with suppliers and customers will remain same what what does it mean when you buy goods you will pay normal 20% vat to suppliers and when you sell the goods you will collect normal 20% from customers don't forget this this will come in your mcq now in past paper it will come i repeat if you if you join flat rate scheme your dealing with people remains same your dealing with your suppliers and customers remains same means if you buy any goods from supplier you pay normal 20% vat and if you sell any goods to customers you collect normal 20% vat so dealing with customers dealing with customers and suppliers will remain same but 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 
when you go to the tax department 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 your dealings will be different when you go when you meet tax department your dealing will be different there will be two news look at the screen now there will be two news one is bad news when you meet tax department you will you will you will listen to news one is bad news and one is good news see i have used the word bad news and good news bad news is here is that bad news here is that that you actually paid VAT to your suppliers that you actually paid vat to your suppliers but you know you cannot claim you cannot claim any input VAT. tax department will say bye 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 go 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 we are not giving you any any we are not uh, returning you any input VAT. go go so this is a bad news see you have paid the VAT to supplier but you are not eligible for any input VAT recovery now but there is a good news as well there is a good news as well and what is the good news the good news here that the vat you collected from your customers was 20 percent the vat you the output vat you collected from your customers is 20 percent but you return to government with a lesser rate you re you will return that uh, output VAT to government with a lesser rate so keeping something in your pocket keeping something in your pocket which is the compensation for input for which is the compensation for input vat not getting not getting read it read it read it bad news and good news bad news and good news read it now for exam always do two workings for exam always do two working whenever you 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 see a practical question whenever you see a practical question of, of flat rate scheme normally the question comes with planning area flat rate scheme questions sometimes come with planning area they ask you whether the flat rate scheme is beneficial or not whether the flat rate scheme is beneficial for, or not so what you do you read these steps for exam always do two workings number one first thing normal workings and compute net worth payable normal working means normal vat make normal vat return output vat less input vat what what we do normally what we do normally you remember output vat less input vat is your normal vat output vat less input vat is your normal vat okay so first of all calculate net vat table using normal workings and the second this is the king step see this is the king step compute vat table using flat rate scheme compute VAT payable using flat rate schemes. Now the question is, sir, how to calculate, how to calculate uh, VAT payable using flat rate scheme? This is the, this is the area C. This is this thing. In flat rate scheme, there is no input VAT recovery. I just told you the bad news. In flat rate scheme, there is no input VAT recovery. Bye bye to input VAT. And there is only output VAT, but, but, but please, very very strict words very extremist word i have to use now what is the formula of output right now total sales see total sales look at here look at here total sales inclusive of fat total sales inclusive of fat multiply by flat rate percentage total sales inclusive of fat multiply by flat rate percentage huh. yes so not only you have to use the total sales not only you have to use the total sales but this must be inclusive of VAT and multiply by the flat rate percentage which will, which will be given to you ready-made which will be given to you ready-made now the uh, now the question of student sir 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 i said what 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 sir what do you mean by this total sales this total sales means this total sales means this total sales means sum of all sales standard rated zero rated and exempt standard rated zero rated and exempt sum of all three sales standard this is the this is the real explanation of this total sales although i know i know and you also know that we haven't collected any output right on zero rated and exempt but yes you have to include here you have to include here because the flat rate is a reduced rate because the flat 
rate is basically reduced rate so output vat with flat rate scheme output vat in flat rate scheme what's the formula total sales inclusive of vat multiply by flat rate percentage multiply by flat rate percentage okay so if you get if you if you get any questions of planning for flat rate scheme always solve that question two times first normal working and then flat rate working and whichever option is beneficial you can write whichever option is beneficial you can write okay okay now let's do let's do a question let's do a question boys and girls let's do a question please 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 be with me be with me the name of the question is white lock sisters the white lock sisters basically a past paper sisters beth and emmy with lock trade as a partnership the partnership has been registered for vat for many years and on 1st of january 2020 and on 1st of january 2020 it began using the flat rate scheme it began using the flat rate scheme to calculate the amount of VAT, to calculate the amount of VAT payable, to calculate the amount of VAT payable. The relevant flat rate scheme percentage for the partnership trade is 13%. C. Ready made relevant percentage is given. Ready made relevant percentage is given to you. Okay. Now, for the quarter ended, for the quarter ended 31st March 2020 the partnership had standard rated sales of 50000 and exempt sales of 10000 now you tell me you tell me and you think 50 plus 10 the total sales is 60 that means if i if i if i'm going to work for flat rate scheme i have to use total sales if i have to work for flat rate scheme i have to use total sales okay for the same period standard rated expenses amounted to 27300c all figures are thank god thank god all figures are inclusive of vat this is easy thing all figures are stated inclusive of vat thank god these figures are inclusive of vat so we don't need to work any extra thing otherwise if sometime it happens they give you exclusive numbers and for flat rate scheme they give you exclusive numbers for flat rate scheme for flat rate scheme you have to use inclusive numbers in the flat rate formula okay now i am not reading anything after this these two paragraph is enough for me first let me complete first let me complete the first two questions and i'm sure you will understand i'm sure i'm sure inshallah now how much see the question how much how much VAT is payable by the partnership for the quarter ended 31st March 2020 if the flat rate scheme is used? If the flat rate scheme is used, now you tell me, you tell me, you tell me, boys and girls, when we use flat rate scheme, when we use flat rate scheme, there are two news. One is bad news and one is good news. Whenever we use flat rate scheme, there are two news. One is bad news and the other one is good news the bad news here is that you cannot claim any input VAT, so forget about input VAT, forget about expenses but the good news but the good news here is that that you have to pay output VAT on reduced rate you have to wait pay output VAT on reduced rate okay and what is the formula for output VAT here see the formula for output VAT is here is total sales inclusive of VAT. total total sales total sales total sales means sum of all sales so in this question, there are only two sales that is a standard rated and exempt. So 50 plus 60, I think is 60. 50 plus 10 is 60,000. Your total sales is 60,000. And thank God it's already inclusive. Thank God is already inclusive. So simply multiply it with 13%. 60,000 times 13% is how much? 60,000 times 13%, let me use the calculator.
7800 okay so your simple answer is 7800d simple answer is 7800 okay now second requirement please read 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 between lines how much vat would be payable by the partnership for the quarter ended 31st month if the flat rate scheme not was not used that means normal working just forget about flat rate scheme now do normal working now do normal working in normal life in normal life look at here look at here i am doing normal working now in normal life you have to pay you have to collect output VAT from customers when you do standard rated sales in normal life exempt sales does not qualify exempt sales does not qualify for any output VAT. hope you remember i taught you right so how much is your output VAT? you have standard rated sales of fifty thousand. you have standard rated sales of fifty thousand. And for standard rated sales, yes, you yes, we have to calculate output pad. Uh, do you remember uh, it's inclusive? They have written inclusive. So for inclusive, you write 20 upon 120. I hope this is basically F3 topic. F3 topic. For inclusive, you have to write 20 upon 120. Come on, 50,000 into 20 upon 120 is how much? Eight three three point three. 833.3 okay this is output vet and then 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 tell me the standard rated expenses tell me the standard rated expenses how much was the standard rated expenses how much was the standard rated expenses it was 27300 you can check it was 27300 so in normal in normal vat working in normal vat return working yes we claim input vat on a standard rated expenses in normal in normal vat working without flat rate scheme yes we claim input vat so 27300 multiply by 20 upon 120 27300 multiply by 20 upon 120 this is the amount of input VAT. This is the amount of input VAT we are going to claim. This is the amount of input VAT we are going to claim. Wait, 27,300 divided by six, 4,550. Okay, so can you tell me net VAT payable? Can you tell me net VAT payable? How much is the net VAT payable? Minus 833.3, it's 3783 almost 3783 is 3783 okay is 3783 so the answer is here is 3783 i have a question come on tell me on the whatsapp group tell me on the whatsapp group which thing is beneficial which which option is beneficial should he go should they go for flat rate scheme or should should they avoid flat rate scheme tell me should they go for flat rate scheme or should they avoid avoid yes good 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 because using flat rate scheme using flat rate scheme using flat rate scheme will cost you more using flat rate scheme will cost you more so it's 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 a good idea to avoid it's a very good idea to avoid this flat rate scheme okay now point number three point number three for each of the following statement concerning the VAT flat rate scheme, select whether it is true or false. Now, these questions are your enemies. I, I, I must say these are your enemies. Five, four, four points. And if you hit one wrong, whole question is wrong. If you hit one wrong, whole question is wrong. So these are very dangerous questions. To join the scheme, expect, see, true and false. To join the scheme, 
expected taxable turnover now this is purely related to law you must remember memorize the law there are some points which you have to memorize to join the scheme expected taxable turnover yes it's 150000 must not exceed one but what it is written including vat no it's excluding vat this 150000 limit is correct 150000 limit is correct see the dodge 150000 limit is correct but the real law 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 says that this taxable turnover must be excluding excluding so that's why this point is false that's that's why this point number 1 is false just because including and excluding mistake number 2 the scheme can only be used by small unincorporated business no this may this may apply to unincorporated as well for incorporated companies as well so this is again a big false these two are false these two are false then a business must leave the scheme if the total vat inclusive turnover total yes total you know for leaving the scheme the uh, the limit is total vat inclusive yes inclusive turnover exceeds 230000 this is true i told you when i was teaching you when i told you when i was teaching you flat rate scheme i told you there are two limits 150 and 230 so don't forget 150 is exclusive 150000 is exclusive plus its taxable turnover 150000 is exclusive of vat plus its taxable turnover and 230000 is inclusive of vat plus 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 it is total sales it is total turnover okay now the last point last point before i read the last point i let me remind you something you know just before the, this slide before this slide what i taught you before this slide i taught you that even if you join flat rate scheme even look at me please the last point even if you join the flat rate scheme your relationship with supplier and customer will remain same even if you join flat rate scheme your relationship with supplier and customer remains same what does it mean you will pay normal 20% vat to supplier on buying goods and you will still you will still receive you will still receive normal 20% output vat from customers okay yes when you meet government when you meet tax department there is a different deal bad news and good news but dealing with customers and suppliers remains same i told you this dealing with customers and suppliers remains same so read this last last point vat must still be charged on standard rated sales invoices at the rate 20% yes you will charge normal 20% vat from your customers yes on standard rated sales because your relationship with customers and suppliers will remain same your relationship with customers and suppliers will remain same this is a very technical point you have to think of with your brain okay so now it's we are already 5 minutes we have already 5 minutes cross the actual time but uh, dear students try to understand one thing that we are doing revision sessions f6 course tx course is is like a big river it's a very big course and there are very small small many things hundreds and thousands of small things so don't expect don't expect that we'll cover everything first of all don't expect okay right these are just revision days and 15 hours are nothing for this big course right but still something is better than nothing something is better than nothing okay so stay in touch on whatsapp group and inshallah we'll meet tomorrow tomorrow i'll teach you the remaining two parts and then we'll tomorrow fill tomorrow we'll inshallah practice on software as well on software we'll start the last 40 marks things like employment income little bit uh, capital losses uh some a quick recap of uh, trading income some quick recap of cash basis okay right so nic's national insurance contribution the key points okay so stay in touch
हेलो हाँ यू कैन नो स्विच ऑफ ओके बाय